all right you are welcome again today let's still continue on our topic that says arc length or we say the area length of a curve now let's take a look at this question for the curve y plus one in bracket squared equal to x minus four in bracket cube find the length of the arc between the interval 5 to 8 okay now we say we should find the length of the arc between the interval 5 to 8 of the curve y plus 1 in bracket squared equal to x minus 4 in bracket cube okay now let's go you know our formula we say that for us to find the area length we are going to say the integral from a to b square root of 1 plus f prime of x squared dx okay yes and then the curve we have y plus 1 in bracket squared equal to x minus 4 in bracket cube let's try to make y the subject okay so that this function will be in standard form so from here we have the exponent of y plus 1 to be 2 so let's multiply the exponent by the inverse of 2 that is by 1 all over 2 so in y plus 1 squared we're going to say multiply by the exponent 1 all over 2 equal to let do same to this number okay we're going to have x minus 4 in bracket raised to power 3 times 1 all over 2 so in y plus 1 we're going to have 2 times 1 all over 2. It's going to give us 2 all over 2, which is equal to 1. So here we have y plus 1 equal to, in the right-hand side, where we have x minus 4 raised to power 3 times 1 all over 2. Then we'll say 3 times 1 all over 2 is going to give us 3 all over 2. So we have x minus 4 in bracket raised to power 3 all over 2. Okay? Now let's take 1 to the other side. So we're going to have y is equal to x minus 4 in bracket raised to power 3 all over 2 minus 1. Okay? Yes, this is our function f of x. So we said that f of x is equal to x minus 4 in bracket raised to power 3 all over 2 minus 1. But in our formula, we say f prime of x. That is to say, from this function f of x, we're going to go further and find the f prime of x that is the differentiation of this function or the derivative of this function okay now let's go for us to do so we're going to say let the content of this bracket let us call it a letter so we're going to say let t equal to x minus 4 okay x minus 4 is in the bracket so if you say let t equal to x minus 4, we're going to find the t all over the x. That is, this function t equal to x minus 4, we're going to differentiate it. So when we say the t all over the x, it's going to give us 1. When we differentiate x, it's going to give you 1. When we differentiate minus 4, which is a constant, it's going to give you 0. So the t all over the x is equal to 1. All right. Now let's go back. You know, we just said let this function y equal to x minus 4 in bracket 3 raised to power 2 minus 1. We say let x minus 4 be called a letter t. So that means we are going to have y is equal to t raised to power 3 all over 2 minus 1. Is that true? Yes. So here we are going to find the y dt. So we're going to differentiate this function y with respect to t. So when we do so, we're going to say dy all over dt is equal to, you know, here we have t raised to power 3 all over 2. We're going to bring down the 3 all over 2, okay? So we'll say 3 all over 2 t raised to power 3 all over 2 minus 1, okay? Yes. So when we say 3 all over 2 minus 1, it's going to give us 1 all over 2. So here we have dy all over dt is equal to 3 all over 2 t raised to power 1 all over 2 is that true 
yes you know but we are actually interested in f prime of x that is dy all over the x not dy all over the t nor the t all over the x so for us to get dy all over the x which is the f prime of x we are going to say the two things we have differentiated when we multiply them together is going to give us what we are looking for that is to say we're going to say that dy all over the x is the same as saying dy all over the t times the t all over the x we have differentiated y with respect to t and we differentiated t with respect to x so when we multiply these two together it's going to give us our function dy all over the x okay now let's go we are going to say that dy all over the x is equal to what do we say that uh, dy all over the t is we have just differentiated dy all over the t and we say that it is 3 all over 2 t raised to power 1 all over 2 right so let's write it. We're going to have 3 all over 2 t raised to power 1 all over 2 times our dt all over the x. We have 1. So we're going to say 3 all over 2 t raised to power 1 all over 2 times 1. Is that true? Yes. When you say times 1, it's going to give us the same thing. So, but we remember that t is x minus 4. Is that true? Yes. Let's bring it back. So if you bring it back, we're going to say that f prime of x which is the same as dy all over dx is equal to 3 all over 2 in place of t now we replace it we have x minus 4 close the bracket raised to power 1 all over 2 is that true yes now in a formula we have the integral from a to b square root of 1 plus f prime of x squared dx and we have succeeded in getting f prime of x now let's go further to find f prime of x squared so that is to say the function that we've just gotten or the value we just gotten let's take the square of it so we're going to say that f prime of x squared is going to give us 3 all over 2 open bracket x minus 4 in bracket raised to power 1 all over 2 all in bracket squared okay yes now let's distribute this squared to 3 all over 2 and then the content x minus 4 raised to power 1 all over 2 so when we do so we are going to say that f prime of x squared is going to give us 3 all over 2 squared and then x minus 4 raised to power 1 all over 2 times the exponent 2 do you understand this you get it right good so here when you say 1 all over 2 times 2 you're going to give us what 2 all over 2 and 2 all over 2 is equal to 1 and then in this side where we have 3 all over 2 squared we're going to distribute this square to numerator and denominator that means we're going to say 3 squared all over 2 squared so when you say 3 squared is equal to 9 and then when you say 2 squared is equal to 4 that means we have f prime of x squared is equal to 9 all over 4, open bracket, x minus 4. Is that true? Yes. Now, you know, you still remember that our formula is integral from a to b, square root of 1, plus f prime of x squared dx. And we have succeeded in getting f prime of x squared. So we can replace it here now. So that means we're going to have integral from the interval we have is 5 to 8. So we say the integral from 5 to 8 square root of 1. So in place of f prime of x squared, we replace it with 9 all over 4, open bracket x minus 4, close the bracket dx. Is that true? Yes. Now, let's use this 9 all over 4 to open this bracket so that means that this 9 is going to multiply x and also going to multiply 4 minus 4 okay so when we do so we're going to say 9 times x is 9x all over 4 minus 9 times 4 is 36 all over 4 so when we join this together it's still going to give you the same thing as above so we have the integral from 5 to 8 square root of 1 plus 9x all over 4 minus 36 all over 4 dx is that true yes now let's go 
you know in this square root we are having fraction let us deal with this fraction so we can decide to multiply everything inside this square root by 4 so that this fraction will go okay so that means we are going to have the integral from 5 to 8 square root of 1 times 4 plus 9x all over 4 times 4 minus 36 all over 4 times 4 dx okay so when we say 9x all over 4 times 4 is going to you know these 4 will cancel each other that we are going to have 9x remaining also when we say 36 all over 4 times 4 before we cancel each other then we have minus 36 remaining so after this cancellation we have the integral from 5 to 8 square root of 4 plus 9x minus 36 dx is that true yes so here we have 4 minus 36 so when we say 4 minus 36 is equal to minus 32 so here we have integral from 5 to 8 square root of 9x minus 32 dx you get it right good now let's go again we said that this is square root of 9x minus 32 okay so this square root can be written as 9x minus 32 in bracket raised to power 1 all over 2 when you say raised to power 1 all over 2 is still the same as the square root okay then we have dx Do you get it right yes so here we want to integrate this proper now so for us to integrate this we are going to integrate by simple substitution okay that means we are going to say let t be the content in this bracket i'm just going to say let t equal to 9x minus 32 so when we say 9x minus 32 is equal to t let's differentiate t with respect to x that means we're going to say the t all over the x when we differentiate we are going to have 9 so when you differentiate 9x you are going to have 9 when you differentiate minus 32 you are going to have 0 because it is a constant okay good now you say we have replaced or we want to replace 9x minus 32 with a letter t is that true yes that means we are going to have the integral you know as we are replacing function now with another variable the interval is going to change so we are going to introduce a new interval since we are replacing it with t we're going to say that our new interval is from t1 to t2 of which t1 can serve as any number and t2 can serve as any number as the interval okay good so we're going to have the integral from t1 to t2 in place of 9x minus 32 we we'll replace it with t so we're going to have t raised to the power 1 all over 2 you get it right yes now we have dx you know we are not going to integrate this with respect to x because the variable have changed from x to t so what can we replace the x with now follow me let's go back to this place we say let t equal to 9x minus 32 you get it right yes now from this place let us make dx the subject so that we can go back and replace the x with the new variable we are going to have you get it right good let's cross multiply when we cross multiply we are going to say that dt is equal to 9 dx we are interested in making dx the subject let's divide both side by 9 when we divide both side by 9 we want to have dt all over 9 is equal to 9 dx all over 9 so when we cancel we are going to have that dx is equal to 1 all over 9 dt so in place of this dx we can actually replace it with 1 all over 9 dt is that true yes so as we replace we are now having the integral from t1 to t2 t raised to power 1 all over 2 times 1 all over 9 dt is that true yes now let's take 1 all over 9 outside the integral sign so when we take it out we're going to have the integral from t1 to t2 t raised to power 1 all over 2 dt 
Now let's integrate proper. So when we integrate t raised to power 1 over 2, we're going to have t raised to power 1 over 2 plus 1. All over 1 all over 2 plus 1. Then in the bracket, we have the interval t1 to t2. Is that true? Yes. So here we have 1 all over 9. When we say 1 all over 2 plus 1, is going to give us 3 all over 2. So we are going to have t raised to power 3 all over 2 all over 3 all over 2. Close the bracket, interval t1 to t2. Now let's go. You know, here we have t raised to power 3 all over 2 all over 3 all over 2. You know, this is the same thing as saying t raised to power 3 all over 2 divided by 3 all over 2. So when we change division to multiplication, it's going to invert. So we're going to have t raised to the power 3 all over 2 times 2 all over 3. So when you multiply this, we're going to have 2 all over 3 t raised to the power 3 all over 2. Is that true? Yes. So here we have 1 all over 9, open bracket, 3 all over 2 t raised to the power 3 all over 2, the interval t1 to t2. All right? Good. Now let's also take these two all over three outside the bracket to multiply one all over nine okay so when we do so we're going to have one all over nine times two all over three which is going to give us two all over 27 in the bracket we have t raised to power three all over two close the bracket the interval t1 to t2 is that okay yes now but you remember that we said t is equal to 9x minus 32. Here we can replace it back, okay? So that means we're going to have 2 all over 27, open bracket. In place of t, now we say 9x minus 32, raised to power 3 all over 2, close the bracket, the interval from 5 to 8. You know, we have replaced the function t to the original function which is 9x minus 32 then the interval t1 to t2 we vanish then we have our real interval which is from 5 to 8 is that clear yes now let's go we have integrated okay and we have this a uh, value you say that 2 all over 27 upper bracket 9x minus 32 close bracket raised to power 3 all over 2 close bracket the interval from 5 to 8 so here after integrating let's plug in a value or the interval you get it let's plug in the interval 8 minus when we plug in the lower interval 5 so that means we're going to have 2 all over 27 open bracket we have 9 in place of x we replace it with 8 minus 32 in bracket raised to power 3 all over 2 then we say minus let's replace x with the lower interval now so we're going to have 9 open bracket in place of x we see 5 minus 32 close the bracket raised to power 3 all over 2 so when we simplify the first bracket we are going to have 2 5 3 we're going to have 253 all right then we see minus when we also simplify the second bracket we are going to have 47 okay good here we have 2 all over 27, open bracket 253 minus 47. So when we say 253 minus 47, is going to give us 206, okay? Yes, so here we have 2 all over 27, open bracket, or you say times 206. So when you multiply this, when you say 2 all over 27 times, 206 is going to give you 15.26 unit all right yes we have solved so far and we found out that the area length of the arc between the interval 5 to 8 of the function y plus 1 squared x minus 4 in bracket cube is giving us 15 point two six uni all right yes thank you very much for watching please if you are new to our channel please subscribe like and share our video keep watching and remain blessed